بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله سبحانه وتعالى he says in the Quran يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وابتغوا اليه الوسيله وجاهدوا في سبيله لعلكم تفلحون one of my all-time favorite ayat of the Quran. I quote this ayah um, in many, many khutbahs in the past. <clears throat> it is an incredible ayah of the Quran. This is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 35, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, people of Iman, ittaqullah, uh, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be pious, um, have a type of uh, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then, وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ wasila. And this is a, uh, a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And seek al wasila, Seek a wasila to God, the wasila to God. What is al wasila? This is related to the word tawassul, which means intermediation. Uh, literally, the means of approach. You see, so there are many deficiencies, or there may there may be many deficiencies in our iman, in our taqwa. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commands us to uh, fill in, as it were, our deficient gaps of iman and taqwa with. Uh, the wasila. Um, to give you an analogy, if someone is going to apply to a university, unless that person has a near perfect SAT score and a near perfect ACT score and uh, you know a 4.0 GPA, that person is going to need help in the form of letters of recommendation. And who writes these letters of recommendation? Well, people who have authority and rank in academia. Right, and it's similar in the spiritual realm. We need all the help that we can get, right, from those nearest and dearest uh, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and we all practice tawassul at some level, right? If you read the Quran, which of course we do, well, the Quran is not Allah, and the Quran is not you. So reading the Quran is really a means of drawing near. Uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is al-wasila. Wabtaghu ilayhi al-wasila. Seek the means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this case, we do it through the Quran. But specifically with respect to this verse, ayah number 35 of al-ma'idah, there's difference of opinion amongst the exegetes of the Quran as to what specifically is this uh, wasila. Some of the ulama say that it is tawbah, Right? Tawbah is a means by which we approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Tawbah is a great thing. We've mentioned it many, many times. Right? That the Prophet sallallahu he said, At-ta'ibu min dhambihi kaman la dhamba lah o kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam That the one who repents is like the one who never had the sin at all. Tawbah is a great thing. Right? And um, unfortunately, in our modern culture, we're taught to simply accept who we are, accept our actions, accept our thoughts and our inclinations. And that really just cuts off the road to toba. So that really, in a sense, cuts off that wasila, that means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you know, says in Surah Al-Anfal in the Quran that he would not punish a people wa anta fihim, speaking directly to the Prophet وسلم, as long as you are amongst them and then he says and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish them wa hum yastaghfirun as long as they are asking forgiveness for their sins and of course uh, in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he uh, explicitly says that he loves certain types of people at least eight types of people and they're described by these attributes we mentioned this in the previous khutbah or, or small lecture that Allah loves the muhsineen and the muttaqeen and the sabirin and mutawakkilin and he also loves the tawabin who are the people of tawbah right 
Who are the Tawabin? People who sin and then they repent. Another opinion is that the wasila in this ayah, 35, of Al-Ma'idah is al the fara'id, the obligatory acts of worship that no one should be leaving. If people aren't praying, for example, if people aren't fasting during Ramadan without a valid excuse, uh, then there's serious deficiencies uh, in our deen. May Allah protect us. Yet another opinion is that al-wasila in this ayah, ayah 35, Surah Al-Ma'idah, is a reference to our master Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he is the means of approach to our Lord. The Ba'alawi Sadat of Yemen they have a beautiful they recite a beautiful benediction upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad miftahi babi rahmatillah. O oh Allah bless and give peace to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam our master Muhammad miftahi babi rahmatillah the key to the gate of the mercy of God. So if you think of the analogy of the Rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being like this walled city with a gate and many claim to have the key, but the, tr the true key is our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran speaking directly to the Prophet, again a very oft repeated ayah in many of my lectures and talks and khutbahs قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرحيم. Say, if you love Allah, say, so the, Allah is telling the Prophet to ask the people, if you all claim to love Allah, then you have to follow me, you have to follow the Prophet ﷺ. Then will Allah love you and forgive you your sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. The Sabab al Nuzul, the occasion of this verse's revelation, according to the uh, Mufassirin, is that uh, a waft, a, a delegation of Christians from the Najran, they came into Medina and they said that they worshipped Isa, alayhi salam, but they did it out of love for God. Right? And this ayah demonstrates that uh, you don't demonstrate your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshipping. Any, anyone other than God. You don't worship the messenger. You don't worship the Messiah. You don't worship the Sheikh. You don't worship the Kaaba. You don't worship the Quran. You only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how you demonstrate your love. Right? So what do you do with the messenger? You adhere to him. You obey him. You follow him. You have ittiba' fattabi'uni. Because the messenger is, is miftahu babi rahmatillah. He is the key to the gate of the mercy of God. He is miftahu babi mahabbatillah. He is the the key to the gate of the love, the unconditional mahabba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ask your Lord by means of his beloved and you will not be rejected. Honor the beloved of your Lord and you will be honored. And this is how it works. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullu al-ansab tanqati' yawm al-qiyamati ghayra nasabi. That, uh, that all of the lineages, all of the connections are cut off on the Yom Al-Qiyamah except my lineage and those connected to me. So obviously here he's talking about the, the righteous Ahlul Bayt as well as those who are connected somehow to the Prophet ﷺ. Really the ittisal of mahabba, connection through love, right? Think of Salman al-Farisi who's not even Arab, he was a Persian and this hadith gives gives us, uh, Ajami's a lot of hope that uh, Salman al-Farisi, the, the Ansar wanted to claim him as one of their own because they said that he became Muslim in Medina. The Muhajireen said, no, he made Hijrah. He came into Medina, just like we came from Mecca. So he's one of us. And the Prophet wasallam he said, Salman minna ahlil bayt. Salman is from us, the people of the house. And in effect, made him an honorary member of the blessed prophetic house of the Prophet ﷺ. He was beloved to Allah because uh, he loved the Messenger ﷺ. There is an amazing hadith recorded by Ibn Majah, Imam at tirmidhi uh, narrated by Uthman ibn Hunayf. Over 15 masters, hafaz of hadith, have explicitly said that the following hadith is absolutely sound. Bukhari and Nasa'i, Abu Nu'im, Al-Bayhaqi, Tabarani, etc., etc., that a man who was Darid al-Basar, he was blind, he came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Ud'u Allah li an yu'afiyani, 
uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me that I might be uh, healed. And the Prophet sallallahu said, if you have patience, it is better. But if you want, I can supplicate for you. And the man said, Ud'u, he said, supplicate. So the Prophet sallallahu he told the man to go and make an excellent wudu and then pray rak'atain, two units of prayer, and then say the following words, Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi Muhammadin Nabi rahmah that, O oh Allah, I ask you and I turn to you by means of Muhammad, the Prophet of Mercy. You see, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ittaqullah wa abtaghu ilayhi al wasila. Seek the means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is the walking Qur'an, right? Kana khulukuhu al Qur'an. And so his, his, his prescription, his prescription to the blind man uh, was based on the Qur'an, recognizing that he is al-wasila, that he is the means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of my favorite hadith in Bukhari, also oft repeated by me, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu after the congregational prayer, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni asabtu haddan fa'aqim fiya kitab Allah, O Messenger of God, I have transgressed the boundaries of permissibility, so punish me according to the Book of God. The Prophet said, Alaysa qad salayta ma'ana, did you, did you not just pray with us? He said, yes. And then the Prophet said, fa inna Allah qad ghafara laka dhambak. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already forgiven your sin. So the point I'm making here is that this man brought his sin to the door of mercy and he was shown mercy. Well, some might say, well, the Prophet sallallahu was alive when that happened. Now, first of all, according to our aqidah, the Prophet ﷺ is hayyun fi qabrihi. This is the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that he was alive in the sense that he's has a state of consciousness, he's in a state of consciousness somehow in a mysterious way in his grave. There's a hadith of Abu Dawood, which which is a strong hadith. Ma min ahadin yusallimu alayya illa radda Allahu alayya ruhi hatta arudda alayhi salam. That uh, no one gives me salams except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns my soul to me so that I might respond to his salam. Imam Suyuti says the meaning of this is that his consciousness, a heightened state of awareness returns to him. You might say, well, how is that even possible if millions and millions of people are giving salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam? He's able to hear this and respond. You're making him into a god. You're giving him divine attributes. No, no one's making him uh, into a divinity or a god or anything like that. Think of a tweet. If you have a million followers and you send a, a tweet, one million people, if you have a, a million followers, will simultaneously get your tweet. You see, the unseen realm is totally beyond our imaginative limitations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the shuhada, the shuhada are not dead, bal ahya, that they're alive. Who's better, the shuhada or al anbiya? And amongst the Anbiya, who is the greatest? It's the Prophet ﷺ. So the bottom line is that our ibadat, our taqwa, our iman is deficient. And we need to take the means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to appeal to Allah's beloved. And nothing and no one is more beloved to Allah than our Master Muhammad ﷺ. And I'll end with this, that somebody might say, okay, what about after the physical passing of the Prophet ﷺ? There's a very famous narration found in multiple books confirmed by all of the Salaf. You'll find Kitab al-Shifa by Qadi Iyad, who's a later scholar. Imam Nawawi as well, a later scholar, mentions this as well, that a Bedouin came to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and he said, O Messenger of God, I've committed a grave sin, but I heard Allah say in, in his book, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ أَنفُسُهُمْ جَاءُوكَا فَاسْتَغْفُرُ اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَابَ الرَّحِيمًا That if only when they had wronged themselves, they had come to you, جَاءُكَ They have come to you, the Prophet ﷺ, and they had sought forgiveness from Allah, and the Messenger had sought forgiveness for them, then they would have found Allah relenting and merciful. So the Bedouin said, so here I am, I'm here to ask Allah for forgiveness, and ask you to ask him for my forgiveness. 
right? So this is someone who's coming to the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then al utbi according to this narration, a man named al utbi was watching this happen. And then the Bedouin left and al utbi he dozed off and the Prophet came to him in a dream and the Prophet told him, go catch up to that Bedouin and tell him that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has indeed forgiven him. So the Bedouin, he brought his sin to the door of mercy and he was shown mercy. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala give us the tawfiq to understand and to rectify our iman and our taqwa and for us to be seekers of al-wasila unto him uh, allahumma innaka afu and hibbul afwa fa'fu anna we should make this dua inshallah ta'ala these last 10 nights it is the practice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam according to our mother aisha in a hadith at-tirmidhi that he would recite this dua quite often in the final 10 nights oh allah you are the effacer of sin and you love to efface so please efface our sins wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa alihi wa sahbihi wasallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh